Hey, what's up? Justin from Make Supply here, and today's video is a build along tutorial for making a laser cut and hand stitched tote bag. Now, if you don't have a laser cutter and you're still interested in trying this project, I have three other options for you. One is a PDF printout formatted for a standard printer, either a letter size or A4 size paper. You're gonna have to put the paper template together, which I have instructions for in the blog post for this project. Two, a PDF formatted for a large format printout, so you'd have to take it to Staples or to a local print shop, and they'll print the entire pieces out on one large sheet of paper from which you can cut the project out. And three, my personal favorite, the acrylic template set for this project. It comes with three pieces, one side panel, one bottom panel, and one strap. This is a separate product and that is listed in the blog post and in the description below of this video. If you're interested in purchasing this, I'll cut this out and ship it to you. This project comes with all stitching holes marked, approximately five millimeter space. So if you have a five millimeter spaced uh, diamond chisel or pricking iron or anything like that, you can easily use that to work on this project. Otherwise you can punch the holes one by one or ignore the holes completely. But as I mentioned in the beginning, for the purposes of this video, it's gonna be a laser cutting project. So let's start by looking at the leather that I'll be using. So the leather I'm using for this project, these are both Horween Essex leather. One is in this brown color. I think it was called like Harvest Brown or something like that. I feel like they just make these names up as they go along. But as you can see, it's just like a standard brown. And this one is just a standard smooth black color. I got these both from Maverick Leather, and let's check the thickness. This one is about 2.6 millimeters thick, so solid five to six ounce. This one is about 2.2 millimeters thick, so the lower end of five ounces, probably like a four to five ounces. Um, I thought these were going to be the same exact thickness. I ordered them that way, but that's leather. Sometimes, you know, some people say what is four to five ounces to one company is closer to five to six ounces for another company. It's just how it goes. You kind of just got to deal with it and roll with the punches. It's no big deal with this project. There is no reason I chose two different colors other than pure aesthetics. I like the way the bags look, the tote bag looks when it has the contrasting bottom and contrasting straps to the body, but if you have all one color, that is no big deal. As far as leather thickness recommendations, um, I like to stay in the five, four to five ounce on the low end and maybe five to six, high six ounce range on the high end. I would not go over 2.8 millimeter thick for my body pieces. I don't know. I know a lot of people like to make really thick bags. I don't think it's really worth it. As long as the straps are strong and the bag is you know, sewn together nicely, it's gonna hold up. So that's just personal preference. And if you're gonna be laser cutting, you have to pay attention to how strong your laser is and how well it can cut through certain materials. So I would suggest around a five to six ounce uh, bag weight if you're looking for like a nice sturdy bag. As far as laser cutting goes, look, I don't know what the prevailing wisdom is on cutting laser cutting chrome tan leathers or combination tan leathers. There's a lot of people that say it's not safe and it's bad for you and it's bad for your laser. And there's other people who do it all the time. I've seen, I've done it before. I've done laser engraving on chrome tan leathers. So I can't tell you uh, either way. If you wanna be safe, contact your laser manufacturer. So Glowforge, if you have a Glowforge, Trotec, if you have a Trotec, and ask them what their band materials list is and ask them specifically about chrome tan leather. They should be experts on what you should be cutting and what you shouldn't be cutting. But to avoid all of that completely, I just use vegetable tan leathers and I know that I'm good to go. So quick note on the straps. So originally when I was planning this project out, I was gonna order a different type of leather, a thicker like vegetable tan leather and just cut straps from that to add to the bag. Then as I was kind of thinking about it, I said in my video, this is gonna be a full laser cutting pro project. So I had to laser cut the straps as well. And I didn't have any thicker black leather. So I made the straps out of this thinner stuff. It'll be fine. Um, if you don't have an extra 
type of leather to make the straps out of. Just use whatever you have. This isn't a very big tote bag, so as long as it's like a five ounce leather, it'll be fine. However, if I were to sell these or make another one, I would definitely order maybe a seven ounce leather for my straps and just use that, cut those out and put them on my tote bags. But for now, we're just gonna be using the same weight as the bottom. All right, so let's take a quick second to talk about laser settings. So I'm using a Boss 65 watt CO2 laser with a bed that is roughly 30 inches by 15 inches. So the first thing you're gonna to have to make sure of is that your laser bed is large enough to fit the largest piece of this project. The largest piece overall is the bottom. This is just a representation, uh, the bottom of the tote bag. And this is roughly in inches, about 15 and a quarter inches wide by nine and a quarter inches tall and about 386 millimeters wide and 233 millimeters tall. So you're gonna to have to make sure that your laser bed is large enough to fit a piece of that size. I took into consideration the size of the Glowforge bed just because I know that's probably the most used laser. And I think that one's about 19 and a half by 11 in the full usable area. So you have plenty of space to cut these pieces. You're gonna probably have to cut them one by one but you can fit all of these pieces onto your Glowforge. As far as cutting settings go, it's gonna be very specific to your laser. I have a 65 watt laser. I like to usually start at around 15 millimeters a second speed and 70% power. And then from there, I either scale down or up depending on what I need. I pretty much never need to go slower than that. Uh, sometimes I will speed it up if I can just for some time savings. But I think that's a good like starting point and you probably want to design like a little square and then test your cutting settings to make sure it's cutting really clean all the way through on the stitching holes and on the edges and then from there you can dial it into whatever you need all right so one more thing before we get started i'm going to show you how i prep my leather to be put into the laser for cutting now here is an example of the what the bottom of the bag will look like. This is our representation of what the leather will look like coming out of the laser. So I like to cut a template, an acrylic template that is slightly larger than the piece that I'm gonna be cutting out. So in this case, it's about, maybe about three quarter, um, three eighths of an inch or a half inch on each side, bigger than the size of this. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to use that to cut panels out of the leather that I'll be using for cutting. It just makes it easier than having to move the side around, maybe try to put the side of leather into your laser cutter. It just doesn't make any sense. And this is a real accurate way to cut exactly where you want on the hide. You know, when you have a wallet project or something smaller, you can probably just cut all of the pieces out of one large panel, but this one, is a little bit bigger, so we're gonna be doing three. So I just take my template that I cut and line it up where I want on the hide and go ahead and trace it. And then from there, I just cut this out. And here I have my removable honeycomb grate. You might not have this on your laser, I'm not sure, but this is just the representation of what sits inside the leather, or, sorry, what sits inside the laser and what the leather is attached to when it's cutting. Very convenient that it's removable. So what I do is I go ahead and I take my panel and I line it up in the corner right where I want it. It should be pretty nice and straight. And then from here, you can go ahead and cut this if you want, but if you watched any of my other laser videos, you will know that I love, love, love using this masking tape. So this is a low tack uh, masking tape. There's a link to this in the blog post and the description below where you can get this on Amazon. If you're gonna be doing any amount of laser cutting leather, I highly suggest buying this stuff, it's excellent. 
It just keeps the top surface nice and clean when you're running it through your machine. And then from there, what I like to do is, well, I'll pull this down. Just unravel enough that'll fit. Turn it grain side down, so upside down. Put it onto your sticky tape. Not the best idea to cut on a honeycomb, but whatever. And then from there, you just kind of, I like to cut a lot extra around the edges. So I use the, it's on the camera here. I use the tape to hold onto the frame, the metal frame. Cause you know, leather not, it doesn't always like to stay flat. That's the problem with cutting it. Um, so I like to make sure there's a nice overlap of tape that really attaches to the frame and holds my leather down. And that is how I prep all of the panels for this project. And now we will take this over to the laser, get it cut, and finally get started with our project. All right, so we just went ahead and finished laser cutting all three pieces of our body here, and they still have the tape on top. So what we're gonna do here is, in my opinion, one of the most satisfying parts, and that's peel off the three pieces of tape and then go over it with a little bit of leather conditioner. I'm gonna be using this BIC4 leather conditioner and a soft microfiber cloth. Okay, so whether you have laser cut this like we did here, or you cut these pieces out by hand, this is what your project should look like so far. We have all of the main body pieces cut out. We have the straps cut out. However, uh, we'll talk about those in a couple minutes. I'm gonna come back to the body pieces. So before we sew the bottom part, the first bottom part to the side panel, we are going to take care of some of this charring on the top here. So obviously when you're laser processing, you'll get a bunch of soot uh, on the edges of your cuts. If you are fine with that, you can go ahead and leave it as is. But what I'm gonna do is just take some sandpaper and just lightly sand off that top layer of soot there. That way I can go over that with some burnishing agent and just make it look a little bit nicer than it does now. However, this leather did not burn too bad on the edges. Some of these leathers, they really char up pretty bad. And this one did not at all. So it doesn't take a whole lot of sanding on this one. I'm gonna do a little bit on the top. I'll do the sides too. Although we'll come back to the stitched up sides once we put the piece together. So you don't have to do too much on the sides. The bottom, this will be hidden inside of the bag. So if you want to leave it as is, it's probably fine. That's what I'll do. Okay, those are our two side panels. They'll be ready to go. For the bottom, I recommend probably just sanding every, every nook and cranny right now. It'll just be easier than once it's put together. But if you wanna wait, especially just do the long edges. Being that this is a black leather, it doesn't show as much as the other ones do. Okay, that looks good for sanding for now. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and treat the top edges of both of the side panels and the bottom panel and just burnish them and make them look nice. Okay, so for burnishing, I'm just gonna be using some tokenol and a wood slicker. I already did the top of this panel here. You can hopefully see that on the camera there. It's a little dark. It's just a, a more refined, nice slick down edge. I did not do any beveling. Um, I don't think it makes sense on the top of a tote bag because they're normally just cut square. 
or they're folded over or something like that. So I just left it just as is and I just burnished the top after that sanding we did there. So go ahead and do this top part here. Again, this is an optional step or if you're using a leather like a chrome tan or something that doesn't burnish, then you don't have to do this step. You can paint it or just dye over whatever you want to do, leave it raw. All right, and that will be good for our panels here. And then it would be the same exact thing for the, um, for the black bottom piece. Just gonna do the long edges for now. Okay, that will complete our burnishing, first burnishing step. Now it is time to attach the bottom to the side panel on the first side. So let's do a quick overview before we start gluing and stitching and all that stuff. As you can see on the design here, the holes at the top of the long edge of the bottom piece overlap on top there, just like that, and are gonna be stitched in place. There's one line of stitching across the body. However, there are two overlapping holes on the sides. That's just for like extra protection. And since you're gonna be overlapping two pieces of leather like this, depending on how thick the leather you're using is, you may want to skive down some of these edges of these wings here. You can do that by using like a standard Japanese skiving knife or, or like I have a a French skiver here. Basically, you might want to just take off some of that bulk if you're using, say, like a six to seven ounce leather or something like that, because when you stitch the pieces together, it's going to be thick. The seam will be thick in that area. Um, I'm not going to do it for this project, but just keep in mind that might be something you want to do at this step now while the two pieces are not put together. So first, what I'm going to do is see this strip, zoom in a little bit here, the strip here under the holes at the end, at the bottom of the panel, I'm gonna rough this up because we're gonna put some glue down here. For all of this, you do not have to use glue. You don't have to use glue on any part of this. You can just put the holes together and stitch them. I just find that the glue helps, especially to hold things together while you're stitching. So I don't have one of those little roughing tools that I see people using nowadays. I gotta grab one of those. So what I'm gonna do is just use some sandpaper and just scuff up the leather on that, that little landing strip there. You can go all the way to the edge. Now with that done, I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on that entire line there. I'm using uh, Aqualim 315, so it's a water-based adhesive. Therefore, I need to put it on both parts, kind of let it dry for a second, and then you can attach them. So let me do that now. With the glue, you don't need a lot. You just have to get enough on there that it holds it in place. Try not to have it, if you did laser cut, or even if you didn't laser cut and you just punch the holes one by one, you don't need to get any glue into the holes, so just try not to use too much so it's dripping inside of the stitching holes. Okay, so just a nice, nice thin layer there, and I'm gonna let that off to the side and let that kind of dry. And now you're gonna do the same thing on the bottom piece. Just flip over. This is all symmetrical, so it doesn't matter what side you start with. Now with this one, since you will be going over the holes a little bit, just try to keep the glue spread thin, therefore, it, so it doesn't um, drip in the holes too much. It's unavoidable in some ways, but you don't want a whole lot.
Okay, that should be good enough. As long as you have a good, a good um, strip of glue on the main part, this part doesn't matter as much. So what we're gonna do is let that dry and then we'll put them together. Okay, so I let that dry and now it is time to do our first glue up here. I find this step goes a little easier if you have a couple spare needles and a couple clips. So these two little binder clips here. Um, you're just gonna put it in place, line up the holes obviously. And then to make sure your holes are nice and aligned, you can use the needle to kind of just check throughout the body to make sure that they're all nice and lined up. So we'll do that now. What I usually do is start at either end and then go to the other side, kind of tack them in place with the needles. And then once I'm pretty sure it's nice and aligned, I'll kind of work towards the middle here. And what I'm doing now is just using the needle and pushing through the hole and I, I can hear it touching the table so I know that these are perfectly aligned basically. So what I'll do now is grab a clip. Sorry about that. Grab a clip, clip down the edges. Easiest way to also check is hold it up to the light. And as long as you can see through the holes, you're good to go. And then from there, I'm just gonna kinda tamp down that glue. Okay, so I let that dry for a couple of minutes there. Now you can see what so it looks like on the back. Nice glue up. Okay, now it's time to stitch uh, across that body part there. For thread, I'm using, so normally I use tiger thread, um, but I didn't have any black tiger thread to do this project. So in a hurry, I went ahead and ordered some tiger thread knockoff from Amazon. So this is a black 0.8 millimeter flat wound thread, just like the tiger thread stuff is. I've never used it before, so we'll see how it goes. It doesn't look terrible, um, but we'll see. Uh, again, everything that I use, I have linked in this video description below or on the blog post, if you're looking at the blog post. Um, for thread, I suggest, I, one millimeter would be fine. I think 0.8 looks the best. You could go, you could size down a little bit more. Um, I wouldn't do much less than 0.6 because then the whole size looks a little bit too big for the thread. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is start at the first hole go to the last hole and backstitch twice. I probably won't do this whole thing on camera here because it's really boring to watch people stitch. Um, but if you need help saddle stitching, there's a lot of good saddle stitching videos out there now. I don't recommend watching mine that I did like six years ago. It's terrible. Um, yeah, there's a lot of good ones out there, so check them out. The only part that sucks about stitching this thing is there's no real easy way to hold it. It's kind of just too giant and weird. So I find it best to just kind of lay it on the table and work it as it is. All right, just went ahead and finished that stitch line there. See what the back looks like. Just gonna trim this off. Cool. So that is one side of stitching down. So for the other side, you're gonna do the exact same process. I don't think I need to repeat it on camera for this. I'm gonna sketch up this sketch up. I'm gonna sketch up, no, I'm gonna scratch up the bottom here. Put down some glue, glue it up, let it dry for a minute. 
and then do another line of stitching like that, like I just did. Then we'll come back and go on to the next step. All right, just finished stitching the bottom on the second side. Uh, audio might sound a little different. i having some audio issues, so I had to switch mics. Uh, what else is new? <laughs> okay, um, so this is what your project will look like at this stage. You have both bottom pieces stitched on. So now, before we fold this together and stitch up the sides, um, we're going to do a little bit of prep work if you did not do this in the previous steps. So what I'm going to do here on both sides is if you did not sand the uh, sides of the bottom here, it's probably a good time to do it. Again, just to get the excess soot off of it. You could still do this later on, but it just makes it easier because it's all open. Same thing on the other side. What we need to do now is to fold up and stitch the sides. So you're going to be folding this inside, um, sorry, yeah, inside out. So your nice side and the grain surface is going to be folded on the grain surface. So on the outside right now is the not as attractive interior. So then when we're done, we're going to fold the bag right side out. So make sure you do that when you do this step, otherwise you're gonna have a weird looking tote bag. So similar to what we did in the previous step when we were gluing this on here, I'm gonna follow the same exact steps. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, run over these edges with the sandpaper just to scuff it up so it has better glue adhesion. I'm gonna lay a strip of glue down on both sides. We're gonna glue it together. Again, this project does not require you to glue anything. You can just stitch this together. I think it just looks nicer. When you look at the seams, they're a little bit more um, put together. They don't flop around. And just a note, uh, for now, I'm going to leave this section alone, this um, cut out rectangle piece here. Just worry about the straight sections. Might as well do it on both sides while you have it nice and flat, because once we stitch the one side, it's kind of annoying to work on it. Again, you want to make sure you don't do any sanding past the distance of the holes. Um, or when you're putting glue down, you don't want glue to be on the other side of the holes. Just keep it from the hole to the edge here. Otherwise you're going to be doing a lot of glue cleanup when you're done. And that's not fun. Go ahead and grab my glue. Again I'm using Aqualim 315 water-based adhesive. But you can use whatever you want. Barge cement, regular leather craft glue from Tandy, whatever you got. All right, so I let that dry for just a couple minutes here, looking pretty nice and tacky. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold it over and line it up. This one's a little bit easier than the first because you have a really nice view onto how aligned this is. You know, the edges of the bottom will be lined up, the top and this bottom part here. So go ahead and line up your holes. Again, um, grab some binder clips. You can use a lot more on this time than you did before and get some needles just to like kind of put this in here together. Another tip is to put a binder clip on the other side that's not glued. Just kind of like line it up and then just place it. That way it kind of holds it structurally how it's supposed to be. And since it's laser cut, we know that it's absolutely perfect. And 
gonna put some clips as I walk down the edge. The toughest part might be the part where the, um, see here, you know, where that real thick section is. All right, so once everything looks good to you, let's see what we got here. You can go ahead and put your clips on and let that dry. Give that a real nice dry time so it's easy to work with once we stitch. We will come back and put our line of stitching in. All right, let that dry for a couple minutes. Let me take off the clips. I already prepped my threads and my needles. So when I'm stitching this, I'm actually gonna be looping over top of the edge here and then looping over the bottom of this edge here. You see how it has that, uh, hopefully you can see this on the camera. Um, but if you're working on this, you can see it on your design for sure. It has that slanted section cut out. Well, I'm gonna loop from that last hole around that section and I'm gonna loop up here. You don't have to, but I like the way that it looks. Uh, I think it looks more complete. So I'll show you how I'm doing that. So starting in the first hole, just making sure that my thread is even on both sides. Let's see how we can do this. I'm just gonna loop over the top like that. Stick it back in there. And same with the other thread. I'm just gonna go over the opposite direction, over the top edge. Pull, pull that through and pull that nice and tight. And then that will be my starting point. So. Yeah, just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom when I'm done. I'll do the first couple of holes here on camera. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish that up. Uh, sit down over here at my computer, drink some coffee, finish this line up and we'll come back and look at it. All right, just finished up that stitch line there and trim this excess thread off. Looking good. Try to get this whole thing on the camera here. See, I wrapped around the top there. This one's probably gonna be hard to see, but I wrapped around the bottom here and that is our first side. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for the second side. I already scuffed it up, so I'm going to put my glue down and then I'm going to stitch the same exact way I did the other one. And then we'll come back and move on to the next step. All right, both seams are now stitched and we are ready to go to the final two stitching pieces. This is the most difficult part of the entire project. It's not really that hard, but if you've never done a box corner before, it it's just a little weird to wrap your head around it at first, but I think the way I designed this file has made it as easy as possible. And if I did my job, you won't have any issue with this. So what we have to do here, let me zoom in a little, is create the, dement the depth for the bag by pinching this corner like this. And when we pinch this corner, all these holes that are on the bottom here and on the side they're all gonna match up. And we're just gonna stitch straight across that line. Now, if you are having a little trouble when you're boxing your corner like this, and this is, you know, you're lining up your holes and it's just not laying down very nice, um, or you're working with a stiffer leather, it's okay to take a rotary punch like this and then just pop a little relief into the corner. So the corner right, oops, sorry. The corner of the bag there. Just go ahead and just 
pop a little circle out of the corner. Doesn't have to be big. See if I can get this on the camera. See that? Having that little circle cut out there is gonna give some relief to the tension in that corner and kind of let the bag lay a little nicer. So now, what we're gonna do here is box this off. And yep, everything's lining up good. So I'm not gonna glue this. I glued everything else, but this section is actually way harder to glue it than it is to stitch it. And in my prototypes, I did a couple of each and I just thought that the glue didn't add anything and it just made it harder. There's so much downward tension on the bag once it's put together that that seam is never really gonna come um, undone. So I'm going straight to stitching. The first stitch is the hardest because this is kind of like loosey goosey and weird. Pump that corner out. See if I can zoom in a little bit more. Just like that. And try to at least line up the holes that you're starting your stitch on first. You'll kind of move it around as we get to the middle. But I'm gonna make sure that looking on either side that my hole is nice and straight. I'm gonna put the first needle through. If you can manage to get a clip in there to hold that for you, that's great. If not, you just kind of got to muscle it through. And then you're going to start your stitch as normal. Okay, got my first stitch done there. If you wanna back stitch one uh, and come forward again just to put a lot of extra uh, strength on that corner, you can. I'm using a pretty thick thread here. This is 0.8, so I'm not really that worried about the seam coming undone. And then from there, let's keep on going. You might have, you know, just take it slow pull one through, pull one side of the thread through, kind of hold it, use your other hand. It's not really like a two-handing stitching situation here. Maybe until the very end. And definitely make sure that you're not st skipping holes. You know, make sure your holes are aligned and you didn't skip one and you're sewing it crooked or anything like that. You don't want to have to redo the whole thing. All right, and that is the first section there. So now, as you can see, the two little kind of split flaps here, they are... Um, just kind of laying there, they're kind of touching, they should be touching each other. And you're just gonna to have to sew over it. So you're gonna sew over that gap into the next hole. Okay, I find that one to be the trickiest, the one that you go over that middle gap. That's the trickiest part of the stitch. And it should be smooth sailing all the way to the end. At this point, you could probably start to uh, stitch with both hands. 
I'm gonna back stitch probably three times just to finish this one off. All right, now let's see if we can get a better look here. This is our finished little box corner. I love that design cutout. I think I got that from um, watching Claridge Leather's video on his tote bag. Although he uses the sewing machine, it just makes it so much easier. You don't have to stitch over the seam, which is really annoying. Like in my last design for my tote bag, if you've done that one. This is way nicer. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim. see we have our boxed corners all stitched up looking good if you want to trim them or sand them even I mean they're not gonna get completely even pretty much ever but you can kind of give them a nice sand okay so next, before we do our straps, we're gonna turn it inside out. So depending on how um, stiff your leather is, is how long this process is gonna take. Basically, you just kinda of wanna work it and just slowly turn this thing inside out. This is a step where you'll really, really regret working with like a stiff natural veg tan leather or something, it's just, almost impossible to flip that stuff. But this Horween Essex should flip pretty easily as it is. Also watch your fingernails so you don't scrape it up. All right, looking good. So our last step will just be to address our straps. All right, now it's time to address the straps. I haven't talked too much about them, but uh, I did laser cut them and so what we're going to do for these is pretty simple. I just did a quick sand like I did on the edge of the bag and then I went around and did a, a light burnish with the tokenol. And instead of using the hand burnisher I just used the Dremel with the burnishing bit just because it's a little bit faster and it's really annoying to burnish straps by hand. Um, here's the other piece I just haven't taken the paper off so Let's process this one. I won't spend too much time on this because it's not exactly interesting to watch. It's gonna lightly sand off the char and then just apply some tokenol to that edge and then give it a once over with the Dremel. Last step for my straps here before we attach them. Just gonna go over them with the Big Four conditioner. I haven't conditioned these yet since I got them out of the laser. Now with adding the straps, you can use the rivets of your choice. Uh, I decided to use some just generic shorter post. I think this is about a half inch post, copper rivet. And to set the rivets, I'm just gonna do it on this little mini anvil. And to cut them, I'm using this craft tool uh, rivet burr cutter thing, I'm not exactly sure what it is. I think it's just called a rivet tool on Tandy. And the appropriate rivet setter for these copper rivets. So I did the first one here already, you can see. Just uh, rivet them in, then trim and peen down the rivets. 
could also, <laughs> I probably should have said this earlier, you could do the strap step before you put everything, before you sew the sides up together. But I feel like since these are so close to the edge, it really doesn't matter. You can easily put them on at this point when it's done. All right. Grab our strap. And if the hole size is not big enough for the rivet thickness that you're using, just, you know, you might just have to widen it a little bit with an awl or something like that. But it should be pretty good. All right, just something like that. All right, we're all done. Just finished uh, peening the rivets on the straps here. Put them nice and flat. And our bag is complete. Let's take a look. Take a look at the inside. Looks good. I think this is a nice size. Uh, if you've made the basic tote bag that I put out a couple years ago, this one I think is a much more manageable size for like an everyday use. And for anything that I would have changed now that I've put it together, the only thing is what I mentioned earlier in the video is the weight of these straps. This is completely fine for a bag this size. However, if I were to give this to somebody that I knew was gonna put heavy use on it, or if you're gonna be selling these in a market or something like that, I would probably choose a strap that is double the weight of this bag. So whatever the bag body is, I would probably double the weight. That's the only thing. And if your laser is not strong enough to cut leather that's that thick, you could always just grab a strap cutter and use the template to make these straps. It's a really, really simple design. All right, and if you are putting this project together or you're thinking about trying this project and you have any questions, please email me directly, makesupplyleather at gmail.com, or you can leave a comment in the comment section below for this video. However, I will probably reply faster if you send me an email. Thanks for watching.